Hey friends, I'm Adrian File. And I'm John File. And welcome to the Love of the Process podcast. We've been married 14 years, 13 good ones, and we have four awesome kids. My career has centered around process improvement and leadership development. And I've been an entrepreneur since I was four and I'm currently an owner and CEO of an insurance company and corporate coaching team. We are working to become better versions of ourselves every day. And we invite you to join us as we share our journey and the lessons we have learned in life, business, and figuring out how to love the process to becoming great. Let's go. (laughs) Hello, friends. Thanks for being here. We have a really awesome guest with us today. We're a little biased because it's our cousin, Mark. (laughs) So Mark Simpson is doing some really awesome stuff in Squim, Washington, and he's actually started a foundation. How do you spell Squim? Squim, Youth Skate Park Foundation. Squim is spelled. Sometimes people call it Sequim. It is, yeah. I call it Squirm sometimes. (laughs) No, it's a great little town, and uh, it's spelled S-E-Q-U-I-M. And... uh, yeah, Squim, Washington. It gets less rainfall than L.A., which is like 17%, which is something for Washington. Less rain than L.A. <laughs> One of the best kept secrets in Washington <laughs> is getting out right now. Now everyone's going to move there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Why don't you give us a little intro into who you are and a little bit about what you love? Awesome. Well, um, who am I? That's a big question. Um, so... <laughs> I don't know what to say. Okay, so basically um, what I'm here for today is that I am the president of Squim Youth Skate Park Foundation. It's It's a nonprofit, a 5013C, and we are a group that comes together and we try to, um, basically we're trying to raise enough money so we can build an extension to um, an aging uh, skate park and make the skate park a little better for the kids safer. And then um, with that process uh, in working with youth, we're going to try to develop that into another aspect once everything's done. But the first project is redoing the Squim skate park and then making it safer for kids. So why, why the skate park? Where did that um, so I've been I've been skateboarding for over 35 years, and it's just been one of those passions. It's the love of my process, you know. And so, how many ollies have you done in your life? Uh, <laughs> I can't count. In in 2014, I w- I made news because I ollied every day, filmed every ollie, and um, so it's kind of one of those things. But uh, yeah, I made the local paper at least. I don't know if I made any national papers. It well, did win a I national award. It. Yeah. <laughs> it, it won a national award. That article did that. Yeah. So I, I love to all eight. That's I'm I'm almost fifty. And so for an old guy who still skateboards, um, yeah, I just try to keep at it. Everybody has to do something. You know, even Michael Jordan today, he's out shooting free throws, and so this is my free throw. Oh, or awesome. or, or okay, at so least practicing 10 footers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> at least 10 footers. That's right. So you said this is the first year the Olympics has skateboarding in the Olympics, right? Yep. Didn't you tell me that earlier? Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, this is the first year and it's pretty exciting. Uh, not a, not all the skate community is is entirely excited about that, but it is to to bring in to officially, I guess to to say that skateboarding is now a sport mm. when it's in the Olympics. So skateboarding, it, there's a lot of factors with it. It's an art form. It's um, definitely physical. So, um, you know, there's there's just a lot of aspects. But so there's a congruency, I guess, of people going, do we really want it in the Olympics? Like even Tony Hawk said, um, the Olympics needs skateboarding more than skateboarding needs the Olympics. Hmm. But here he is. He's the going to be the Olympic commentator. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I think it's cool that I mean, kids obviously every kid needs an opportunity to do something that they love mm-hmm. and to feel like they've got adults that are supporting that and encouraging that. Yeah. And so, even just seeing somebody that is older than them, you're not old, but it's someone that's older, older than the kids. Yeah still doing this sport and then also trying to build this skate park for them that's really cool we're excited it really is it's 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 awesome seeing the kids and we when we have uh, contests or skate jams 
we're basically we have a lot of raffle prizes if we have a contest they're winning stuff they compete um and it's just a great day whenever we've done like i think we've done about nine of them and so from 2015 to now and so it's been a long haul but uh it's been a good haul you know cool. and uh, we just had one june 12th and it was awesome i mean we had over 300 people show up for our skate jam we had another nonprofit make hamburgers and it was really good so I got a couple. So, so the skating, like, I love what you said. Everyone has to do something. I, I really want to talk about skating, like, history, 35 years for you. Uh, I remember playing, I think it was like a Nintendo game, Skate or Die. <laughs> Skate or Die. And, uh, but also, um, you know, you think about the culture of skating and, and kind of the evolution of that. In your 35 years, you're going to be able to give us a ton, uh, especially the, the local uh, skate park and, and kind of that um, community, mm -hmm. but also would love to hear, you know, like right now, if we're in Squim, how many kids are at the park? How many kids are skating at the park right now today? It is the, it can be the most used skate park at Cary Blake, which is, Cary Blake is the, the park with pickleball, skate park, kids playgrounds, um, duck pond, dog park. It's a, it's, it has an amphitheater, so it's a huge area, but every day, the competition now, because pickleball and squim is huge, but the skate park is either the first most used skate um, or park facility at Cary Blake, or it's right there second under the pickleball. Squim is a retirement community, and so pickleball is an easier game for retirees, and so it's been really popular in Squim. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the skate park before the pickleball courts was the number one used um, area at Cary Blake Park, which has been pretty cool. Hmm. Um, and the park hasn't really, um, there hasn't been any improvement to the park in 25 years. Hmm. And so just in the last year, we've gotten the city to to add a couple safety, safety features now that the uh, pickleball court just came in. And the pickleball court in Squim is beautiful. Um, and then we got Squim Skate Park, which kind of looks like a prison. <laughs> it's uh, it's all gray concrete, um, no color. It's fenced in with really high, um, you know, uh, steel fencing, and it's just it just is ready to to look more modern and needs to be safer. All the um, transitions are really worn out, and which can make you know when you're when you're riding on urethane. And not pneumatic wheels like like bicycles. It's just it's harder to get speed. Things could um, you know throw a rider, and so that's the main thing. We just need to make it safer. But what does the city say? So it's been twenty five years. What is their priority? So obviously pickleball uh, was a priority, and now they have nice pickleball courts. The pickleballers did is are doing exactly what I'm doing, but they were able to fund their um, their pickleball courts a little faster. Got it. They raised like. Sixty thousand dollars within, oh, it was it was a short time compared to, but I think they had a, a pickleball network before, and each pickleballer threw in like five thousand um, dollars to get the park going. Whereas skaters are just are a lot of times they're the fringe kids, and they come from families that that just don't have a lot of money. Yeah, so it's it's just been more of a process, and how we raise money has been doing. We've been doing it through GoFundMe. We've been doing it through those contests that I talk about and those skate jams that I've talked about. So it's it's just been a little longer process, but we're moving along. Right now we're we're closing in a little bit past um, $16,000, heading towards, um, you know, it'd be nice to get $25,000 goal and then have the Tony Hawk Foundation <coughs> come in and, um, and then match those funds. And with that big name, the hope is that we'll, we'll bring that due diligence to the city and then boom, we'll get this amazing skate park. So, hmm. um, and we got designs that I brought today so you guys can see how good the new section looks like. And, um, so you're not be, just modernizing and making the current area safe, but you're also trying to expand it. Yeah, expand, yeah. And we have the okay from the city. so. It's in the plans. It's just a matter also of getting the city 
they've they've kind of I don't know we're we're still working with them, but trying to get the the skate park built by a professional skateboard park builder is big because you can have any Joe Schmo with concrete people. You know they they try to make these things, but they don't understand the the intricacies of what a skate park really needs and how the transition needs to be laid out because when you look at a skate park it's i don't know everything has to be really smooth you can't have any you know dips and that was one of the problems when they first made that park they they got the lowest bidder which at the time skate parks weren't really being developed they didn't really know what they were doing so they made this uh um, I mean, the park then cost three hundred thousand dollars, tons of concrete, but it just it was done poorly. But they didn't know what they were doing. But now in, in skate park development, you have uh, oh, you know um, Jefferson Street in Eugene, beautiful park. Uh, you have you know Burnside was one of the early ones, and they've they've those guys who developed a skate park underneath a bridge in Portland have become skate park builders and they travel all over the world. And so you have Grindline, you have Dreamland, you have several others, but those two are the main ones. Okay. Yeah. Can you explain the process? Like this is skating and learning to skate and, and just just the camaraderie, the community and all those things. I, I really, I, you know, I was excited. Like I told Adrian uh, before you came on, board, on the show about the process of skating, the process of the camaraderie, the process of the art, the process of kind of the every day, you know, yeah. learning something a little new or or staying at it at fifty almost, still doing ollies. I mean, you know that me. that's really where it, where it comes from. It's just that, like, hey, I want to be on, I want to be able to skateboard for the rest of my life. And then, how do you develop something that that could not just work for you, but for everybody around you. And how can you get people excited about um, something that you're working on that could benefit their, you know, learning how to skateboard or um, keeping up their skills as well? Because it's never just all about yourself. It's like, hey, we want this for everybody. But um, I think just in the process of of doing this, it's it's really interesting because we. Um, we got together like maybe a room full of seven guys that skateboarded and, um, we're like, we need this. Um, let's bring in Grindline and Grindline came in and said, this is the steps that you need to do. And so, um, we're like, okay, we can do this. And then the question was asked, does anyone know a CPA? That was the first question because you need a CPA to get a 5013C. I raised my hand. I know a CPA. Great. You're president. <laughs> That's how it happened. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, I'll be president. Um, and what else do we need? Well, you need a board. Okay. Someone needs to be a treasurer. Who's good with money? Oh, you're good with money? Okay. You're the treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next question was, I need a second. I need a vice president for the board of directors. And so we set up someone um, at LibTech who... Uh, um, Tim Stanford. So he's, he's the vice president. And so, um, then we got our crew and then from there we're like, okay, so we just start knocking down the pins. Like what's the next step we need to do? How do we raise money? Oh, we need to get insurance. Oh, we need to get, you know, we need to have, con you know, a contest to raise the money or we would have, um, we'd go to a bar, we would have, um, a movie night and people would pay and then a percentage of the house would go to the skate park or mm -hmm. you know and it all just started with community you know so that's awesome yeah but that's basically how I got involved as president and so far it's been you know um, I've just stayed on that on that mission and we haven't really changed much <laughs> um, since 2015 which pretty crazy that's really cool well it's really fun to hear like your heart around it um but then also that like i think it's encouraging for people to hear that this doesn't have to be your full-time job in order to be able to do something that you care about like yeah. you can do your normal your normal work i guess and still add value to the community in a way that like brings you joy and brings like fills you up so i think that part's really cool to hear yeah it How is 
How long ago was that that you started at this? Um, 2015. 2015. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Now, this is a this is a great story. When we go out there and we see the Dreamland design or the you know, Land design, or to answer some of your questions, though, like when I when I was growing up, I was skateboarding. I started in with in Oregon. They had the Oasis contest, and I entered those Oasis contests. And I I became from um, in the one A division. I was um, I think around eighty eighty nine to ninety. I was number one and I won like five contests in a row. And so from there, um, moved to Seattle for college and then they had a big contest there and I got second, which was in Seattle. That's huge because you're, you're moving from a small town of Eugene to Seattle and then you're like, oh my gosh, I got second in that contest. And from there, it's just, you know, seeing how, you know, just, just that passion of like, Oh wow! I did something great. I was up in the top echelon, you know, for a little bit, and and I think that stuck with me. Like, and then I had so much joy from my childhood. How can I create it for other people too? Mm. Does Nike do anything? I'm thinking of Nike is pretty huge. Do they do um, skateboard, yeah. Because I mean, if you've heard of Nike SB, uh, the SB stands for skateboarding, right? And um, they do, you know, they do. I don't know if they have any skate parks that have a Nike logo all over. I know that Tampa has a pretty, there's a, there's a huge, um, Tampa spot. That's what it's called. Um, has a huge, uh, uh Nike influence in Florida. Mm -hmm. That's where all the AMs go to compete. Mm -hmm. And from the top echelon of the AMs, they turn pro usually from the Tampa AM and Nike is a big part of that. And I know throughout the Tampa spot, there's a huge Nike everything. In Portland, you know, that's right where Nike is. I'm not sure. That's hmm. something I am probably need to look into. That's not a bad idea. Well, I just think of, I think of you know, the, the clothing apparel side of, of skateboarding has got to be decently expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nike, I don't know, Adidas. Vans make Vans. skate parks. Vans, Vans have made skate parks um, all over Huntington Beach, California. Um, I don't know if they have one in London. Um, yeah, I think they're starting to make more Vans parks. That's awesome. Yeah, so it just seems like that there's got to be, if there's a will, there's a way. How many kids, though? I just, you know, I just picked, I'm picturing back to swim. Like, if mm -hmm. I got to swim right now, how many kids are on the skate park right now? You know, yes, from, from 10, 5. Oh, right now, if we could look at Google Maps, I would say there's probably about, you know, 10 to 15 kids right now. Yeah. Um, and it depends on, you know, the, the sunny days. It could be more. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, at my contest on the 12th, we had over 300. Yeah. So, wow, that's it's, awesome. And we've had, we have a community of over 600 people that are on our Facebook page, which is the Squim um, Youth Skate Park uh, rebuild expansion. That's awesome. Well, and you, it seems like too, you know, tapping into that idea of skating for life, right? I mean, yeah. as I think it through, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have thought traditionally, I mean, they're, they're looking at sports and things that you do pickleball. That's why it's growing in intensity. It's really good for the brain mm -hmm. and the amount of computers and technology and things that we're, we're subrogating our brain to, um, that if we do physical activities like table tennis, supposed to be really good. Sudoku, obviously for the mind, but skating balance, ba balance is really a balance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it seems to me like skate for life. Is so that you know, if you, you're building a place, because I always called Squim Heaven's waiting room. Okay, <laughs> he said it's a retirement community. It's 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 grown younger. Yeah, obviously because of, of what I'm hearing uh, about the demographic that showed up at that deal. But skating for life, like you're kind of modeling, um, and now you've got people who might be able to write some bigger checks too when they catch a vision for, I moved to Squim as a destination, retirement place, as a skate, as a skater. Yeah. Maybe. Well, there is there is a lot of um, older surfers, and I'm also part of a group called um, P&W Christian Surfers, and there's there's several guys that are you know over fifty that are like 
they surf and, and they like to do that. Because it's a swim. You can surf, skateboard, and snowboard. All in the same day. It's called the Triple S. And it's not easy to do, but people do it. And really? It's, it's pretty awesome. Tell us about the yeah. Triple S. <laughs> <laughs> so basically it's that. It's... Um, in Squim, there's there's a huge snowboard and surfboard company called LibTech and GNU, and um, that they moved there because there was surf in the Strait of Juan de Fuca. It's kind of secret, but there's surf there. There's surf on the coast as well. And then Hurricane Ridge has um, some snowboard. They don't have really a lift chair, but they have rope toes up there in the winter. And so in the winter, when you have mild winters here in Washington State, especially in Squim. You can surf, you can skate, you you know, and having a good park um, is important, but you could do all three in one day. You know, I spent some time at the skate park when I was in high school. <laughs> yeah? I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what were you doing? But, you know, one of the things... What were you doing there? <laughs> meeting points. <laughs> that was really bad. <laughs> but, I don't know. Yana? <laughs> yes, she was mostly meeting the boys. She probably got on the skateboard too. I did not, but I am a snowboarder. I do have a GNU we can pull out. That's awesome. For the triple S. But my point is, when we were having the graffiti problem in Wenatchee at the skate park, they actually enlisted the kids that were all there to do the art for it when they were doing the renovations. And it was just really cool to be able to see like the community come together and create their own art. And it totally reduced... The yeah. graffiti there because it was the kids that were already there anyway. Eugene did that too, and and actually Burnside has done that too. I've we've talked about that with the city, and and it's they they've given us. Um, it needs to be sanctioned. It needs to be organized, but they've given us a nod if we can get get it together. So it's kind of in the plans. Yeah, that. that's pretty cool. I mean, you're yeah. an artist too, yeah. so it's fun. It'll be fun it to be see great. like what you come up with. And they have given us a free graffiti wall too already. So cool. Yeah. What's a good skateboard GNU? Is that the skateboard that's brand? A snowboard. That's, that's a snowboard. That's a snowboard. Um, well, you know, Eric had a GNU too. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a, there's a lot of great brands. Um, one of the local brands that has really helped us a lot is Gluefoot. And it's just a guy who makes them out of his house, um, Greg Pravaznik. And yeah. amazing. He's, he's a carpenter. And yeah. he's a craftsman, and he makes amazing skateboards. So, what, is there are there lessons? Are there ways for kids to learn and swim? Are there any classes? There or is. I actually pick up a board and go. I used to work for the city of Port Angeles, which is Squim sister city, about seventeen miles away, and I used to teach kids how to skateboard. Um, there really isn't anything going on now, um, other than I've done private lessons. I'm teaching a kid right now. Um, to, to ride around when I have time. Um, <laughs> but, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The, right now, nobody, nobody's teaching. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, other than going to the park and then, um, it's amazing community because I've seen some of the bigger kids show, show some of the little kids stuff, <coughs> you know? Yeah. We were cool. at a skate park, uh, for a company event, a summit, uh, two years ago in, in around Leavenworth. And I remember watching uh, the camaraderie mm. of kids trying different things and the respect level. And, you know, I initially, you know, I traditionally, you know, th thought of skaters, you know, and but in, in this old school, like, you know, grungy, but also not very responsible way. Mm -hmm. uh, I used, you know, and, and that moment for me was totally eye opening. And then hearing what you guys are doing. And in your dream of, of giving kids better opportunities to skate, ride safer. Um, Can I and, add something yeah. to that? Yeah. One of the things that really appeals to, to kids that are, you know, maybe they, they're, they're, they're from a single parent home. Right. Is that they'll go to a skate park. Right. And what, what they'll get from a skate park is that older kid yeah. that sees them do, do some kind of trick or even just the first time they drop in. And they're like, they're bringing out that encouragement. Right. And so that's something that they don't get at home. Mm. Right. And so it, it really connects, you know. Mm. Yeah. And so, I can hear your passion in it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And every kid, you know, we talk about love the process, but in the macro, we think every kid is one encouraging elder away from a success story. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. and so any venue that provides that opportunity is pretty powerful. And 
Um, I think so often, you know, skateboarding is not, I mean, it's now in the Olympics, but it's not, it's not per se mainstream, you know, yeah. it's not baseball, soccer, basketball, et cetera. It's, it's, I think it's pretty, it's there. You think it's, I, there? it's there now. Okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, Tony Hawk's on a subway mm. commercial right now. <laughs> and, um, nice. uh, National Go Skateboarding Day was two days ago. Okay. And, the, the TikTok is a huge youth right, app, right, right, and it was the biggest thing on TikTok two days ago. Well, this is awesome. It's been so fun to have you. Is there anything else that you want to share about the Squim Youth Skate Park Foundation? You know, I, I'm just excited to be here. Excited that you gave me the opportunity to tell people about what we're doing in this little town of Squim. Um, you know, uh, we're just excited. We want a we want a good place for kids to to have fun and ride. And I hope this gets a lot of views. <laughs> <laughs> share with your friends. You share with your friends. <laughs> What's your last question? You always ask one final question of every guest. <laughs> if you have one thing you would like our audience to know, what would it be? About anything. About anything? Oh, boy. I would think that would go beyond skateboarding. You know, um, one of the biggest things in my life has just been Jesus Christ. And I'm going to point to him all day long when it comes to um, how he's changed my life, how he's changed my perspective, how he's taught me how to love someone more than um, I love myself. And so I'll leave it at that. Ride for Jesus. <laughs> Come on. Skate, Skate for, for life Jesus. for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is king. Yes or no. Yes, all day long. That's awesome. <laughs> love it. Thanks for being here. Have a great week, friends. Let's go. Let's go.